Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and we're going to talk about and review the Olsen Ruby nozzle. I happen to get this from shop3d.ca, the official Canadian reseller of the Olsen Ruby nozzle. The Olsen Ruby nozzle comes in this fantastic package. This one is 0.4 millimeters and 2.85 millimeter filament compatible, made in Sweden, and it's not in the box because it's in my Ultimaker. Installing the nozzle on your Ultimaker 2 Plus is actually simple because it just goes into the Olsen block easily. Print out this torque wrench and then as you tighten it, it doesn't let you tighten it too much. The fine folks at shop3d.ca also provided me with this roll of carbon fiber nylon filament from Fiber Force. Look at that. Made in Italy. Must be good. So I printed nearly the entire roll and there's not much left on it. What did I print? Let me show you. Whoosh. The first thing I printed was this. And this is a cross between an owl and a strawberry, affectionately known as a strawberry, by Sparkyface5. I will put a link in the description so you can download it yourself. It's amazing the quality of this model printed in that carbon fiber nylon material. The detail is exquisite. The layer lines nearly disappear and you're left with a wonderful model. This actually turned out really good. I also happen to print Make Anything's vase and this cool rook. The rook has the DNA strand in the middle. That did fail, but the rest of the rook looks great. And the vase itself looks fantastic. Of course, it's a nylon material, so it's, it's awfully resistant to me squishing it. Other than that, these are great models, even though the DNA failed in this. I thought, you know, it's nylon, it's carbon fiber, it could be strong, so I printed this, and it's strong. This is really strong. The carbon fiber nylon did a fantastic job of making this, and it looks great. The nozzle did a fine job of reproducing it. One of the things that I noticed with the carbon fiber nylon is the layer lines disappear. Everything was printed at 0.2 millimeter layer height. Oh, this is great, and it's so strong. She's great. Finally, to get the last carbon fiber nylon print out of the way, I went to print Darth Vader's head, the low poly version from Flowalistic, and oh, it looks like, <sighs> dang it, something happened, and Darth Vader's head just didn't adhere <laughs> very well. No! What happened? Well, this wasn't a failure with the nozzle or the material. It turned out there was a snag in the material that caused it to not extrude as well as it could have. And then once the snag cleared, it was able to continue the rest of the head just fine. If you look at the inside, you can see that I used Cubic Subdivision, an infill pattern available in Cura. The bottom half of this Darth Vader model looks great, and the top half does as well. But just like with any filament, a ruby nozzle isn't going to save you from a snag. Now he's Canadian. I don't get it. Well, let's clear up these Darth Vader carbon fiber nylon brains and talk about what happened next. I decided to feed my High Five Blue PLA from Protopasta through the machine to see if the orifice of the ruby nozzle had widened or become irregular. How did it work out? Let me show you. Of course, printed my Maker coin, 0.2 millimeter layers, and it's glorious. It looks fantastic. It looks exactly what it should look like, and I think that's a good indication of the ruby nozzle being able to handle the harsh carbon fiber nylon filament. Great. I also printed a stand for my Apple Watch charger. I did release a video on that earlier, which you can see if you go to a link in the description. Uh, that turned out just fine, and you got to see it in the video as well. And finally, I printed this rocket. This was modeled by my buddy Xander. Him and his dad run the Fun King 3D, 3D printing channel. Xander designed this all by himself. I said I would print it. It printed as well as it could. I did send some model suggestions back to Xander, and I have a new, a new version of this to print out. But as far as the print quality goes, it's wonderful. Again, the ruby nozzle with the PLA filament from Protopasta, my High Five Blue, did a wonderful job. So what do you pay for a nozzle like this? Is it worth it? Well, 
Right now at shop3d.ca, the Olsen Ruby nozzle is available for $123 Canadian. Matter Hackers carries the same nozzle for $90 US. How does this compare to a hardened nozzle, you may ask? Well, a standard E3D hardened steel nozzle from Matter Hackers is $25 US, which makes the Ruby nozzle a little less than four times that price. Is it worth it? Well, I can tell you that it printed incredibly well with absolutely zero signs of degradation. There was no problem printing the PLA after printing an entire roll of carbon fiber nylon. Granted that you will get those results as well with an E3D hardened steel nozzle. But remember the hardened nozzles do wear over time because it is just hardened steel. And if you print nothing but abrasive filaments over and over, you're going to widen the orifice. You're gonna make it irregular and the nozzle's gonna have to be changed out. One thing to remember about the Olsen Ruby is that Anders Olsen developed it in order to print filament with boron carbide in it. So the Olsen Ruby gives you one nozzle that you should only ever need. The idea is you don't have to keep replacing nozzles with this. And with that one nozzle, you get extremely good heat conductivity through the Ruby nozzle itself. It's able to maintain a consistent heat temperature, guaranteeing that your filament is going to be extruded consistently. Plus, you're also able to print at higher speeds with abrasive filaments because the higher speed won't affect the Ruby nozzle like it does other brass or hardened steel nozzles. Well, in the end, it's really up to you. If you're going to be printing with nothing but abrasive materials until the end of time, it really is in your best interest to invest in a nozzle that can handle it, and the Olsen Ruby will be able to handle that. If you occasionally print with abrasive materials and you think an E3D hardened steel nozzle will be good enough for you, you're more than welcome to stick with that. Uh, my, myself, I like the Olsen Ruby, I like its performance. I think that having that nozzle means I will print with more carbon fiber impregnated materials. I will print with more abrasive materials just because I know I won't have to worry about my nozzle at all. And I think in the end, that's the best part. Well, thanks for watching. There we go. That's my official review of the Olsen Ruby nozzle. I used the 2.85 millimeter filament version and I used the one with the 0.4 millimeter orifice. I think it turned out to be uh, a great thing and I would purchase this with my own money. Beyond that, thanks for watching and subscribing. Don't forget to ring that bell to be notified of when cool stuff is uploaded. Big thanks to everybody that supports me via Patreon, uh, via YouTube Red, or for everybody that lets the ads play. And finally, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, carbon fiber is cool and high five.